Hey, brothers and sisters, I bumped my elbow as I was coming down the stairs just now. Hey, look at this. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's see if it'll like it. Well, nope, won't let me zoom in. But look out there. Look at those huge rain clouds right there over that mountain and all this. And it's cold. It's like 45 degrees this morning. Yesterday, it was like 80 degrees when we went to bed last night. Minister Paul and I did another <clears throat> little video together and had a pretty good response. This coming um, Saturday, we're also going to do another uh, video together. And we might have a special guest. <clears throat> I don't know yet, but we might be able to talk this pastor into coming and uh, speaking a few words of his wisdom on our channel. Um, you might know him, Pastor Patrick Winfrey. He might show up. We don't know yet, but... We're working on a deal to see if it fits in with his schedule. He's very busy. So, um, great man. He really is uh, equipped with the prophetic, you know. Even as Minister Paul, you know, Minister Paul and I were talking about some of the things the Lord has told him uh, prophetically. Um, for instance, Donald Trump and um, this this uh, district attorney that is attacking him, that was given to Minister Paul as a, a, a word, and he made a video about this before it ever happened. So God is really moving prophetically in these last days. So we know that um, Bragg has done this thing, and they've indicted President Trump, former President Trump, and they're trying to um, destroy him. And, uh, you know, the Lord had shown me that, uh, back in 2016, um, before the, uh, three days before the first, um, debate, I'd had a dream about Donald Trump being the nominee and then he won. And then, uh, they were selling his memorabilia and it was really bad. Like almost like the feeling was almost like he had died. So I didn't know what was happening. You know, a lot of times the Lord will talk to you like that and you don't know exactly what he's saying. And <clears throat> the problem that I have is so many times God will tell me something and then I'll blab it instead of like sitting on it and praying. I didn't have much time at that time, you know, three days. But <clears throat> look at this. You know, some people say that there's a prophecy by some Catholic priest, I believe, that uh, there'll be three days of darkness and then uh, the seasons won't be able to be told one from another. But we know that God um, said to, in the beginning in Genesis, that the day, Charlotte, don't eat that. You're not a cow. That, that the seasons will remain, that he has a covenant with them. And so while things may look bad, like they're changing, like God hasn't kept his covenant. That's not true, brothers and sisters, because look, yesterday it was 80 and this is in April. This is April 12th, 12th or 13th. What is it today? I don't know. Anyway, and there's, there are huge clouds and it's cold here and the sun is barely shining over, <laughs> over there. Um, it's about seven o'clock in the morning. The dogs are out there. Look at all this grass I'm going to have to cut. I'm 65 years old, man. And it, I bought one of those huge string trimmers that uh, our gas powered. has got like a seven horse motor. And uh, it's like 22 inches. And I did it basically for my son's yard. And then we bought this house. Um, we we're very fortunate. This house cost $42,000. Anyway, but they, they're they trying to keep you from being able to survive in California. They're going to raise these special taxes. They just voted on it. You can't change it. They're, every residence, every lot is going to have to pay like $560 more a year for trash removal. And then they'll, um, they're going to separate it. Even if you want to recycle yourself and separate yourself, you still got to pay that fee. They don't care. 
Um, so that's really an added tax and imagine the billions of dollars that are going to come in. They have to have this money because they've got so many social programs that they can't fund it. And so many businesses are leaving the state of California that now they got to come up with new ways to tax the people that are staying behind, you know, and it makes you wonder like, man, I just need to get rid of this and get out of here. Like these businesses are, they're just fleeing. They're, they're saying there's like, um, three, 400,000 people. Uh, leaving every year in the state of California. Doesn't make a dent, though, really, because there's, there's millions. But pretty soon you're going to have all these people just on programs, and who's going to pay for all that? It's going to collapse like you see happening over in France whenever they talked about, hey, we need to lower your money that's coming out because we don't have enough, and the people begin rioting and burning the city down. So anyway, um, God also made a promise to David. He says, if you can break my promise with the day and the evening and the seasons, then I'll break, then my promise with, for David will be broken. You know, and his promise was that there would always be one of his sitting on the throne. Right now in Israel, there isn't a throne. And there hasn't been a throne really there for thousands of years. But this is just part of this, brothers, so we can, brothers and sisters, so we can have joy in our hearts, knowing that the Lord is coming, that something is happening. Look at that. That grass is like, it's never been this high. We've been here seven years in this house. It has never been that. It's like a foot and a half to two feet tall all over the place. This is horrific. And then it's, look at how tall it is right there. Just amazing. The wind's blowing like 100 miles an hour during this week. And, and I buy my barbecue cover. And look at what happens. This thing's like, this guy, I've got a pit boss. I've had it for like three years now. And I'm maybe two and a half. And I bought this cover for it. And then look at this. And I take care of this. And it's just disintegrating because everything we get is made in China. And they don't put any UV blockers on any of the plastics or anything. And so, Charlotte, come on. It's cool. Come on, babies. Just go up here. Charlotte thinks she's a cow. So she's going to eat the grass. And then, you know what grass does? Ask Dr. Berg about it. You eat grass. And people are always eating those grass and everything. Grass will make you vomit. And these dogs, when they want to vomit, they'll eat grass. But sometimes they want to eat it for the chlorophyll. But it always makes them vomit like yesterday she was eating some grass and then she comes over and sits by me and starts acting funny and then she threw up, lost her breakfast I'm like what <laughs> anyway brothers and sisters we can have joy in our hearts you know i'm i'm subscribed to jack hibbs and youtube is shadow banning him because i have not only do i have the i'm not only subscribed to him but i also have the bell icon clicked, so they're supposed to send me notifications from him. Nothing. Nothing ever comes. I, I just happened to stumble across one of his videos today. I've got a lot of stuff going on, so I wasn't checking like I normally do. And I've been doing a lot of research, you know, for these little talks that uh, Minister Paul and I have been doing together. You know, we really want to be prepared so we can give the word to people and change people's lives. But, um, you know... This guy that made this prophecy, this Catholic priest about the seasons, you won't be able to tell one season from the next and all this kind of stuff. Who knows what that means? And we know God's word is always true, no matter what some man prophesies. If, if it's me or anybody that prophesies something that does not agree with God's word, you just throw it in the garbage. Because God will never go against his word, brothers and sisters. He will never do that. Look, this guy's down there you can see smoke coming out because he's having to heat his house it was cold this morning and yesterday it was 80 degrees and then it's supposed to be hotter later today you know i get these notifications and so i want you guys to be with us this coming uh saturday if you can uh at noon california time so that's pacific um we're going to have a, an interesting little show again and try to do an hour, maybe hour and a half or so. They always run a little bit longer than, than what we'll say, oh, two hours and then it'll be almost three or we'll do an hour and a half and it'll be two and a half hours. So, but the Lord has really been moving. 
and I want you to have uh, joy in your heart because you can see what's going on and go watch that video find Jack Hibbs I posted uh, one on my channel but you probably didn't get notified but you can go look at Jack Hibbs they did something down in Los Angeles they elected this guy sent him up and um, they're really trying to fight this uh, California is really bad about this transgendered stuff that's going on and they want to um if you're say your little your little little johnny he's in uh he's in kindergarten or he's in preschool and he wants to wear the pretty little girl's dress well all of a sudden he might be wanting to transition so you know let's work on this transitioning him and we'll keep this from the parents and all this stuff and the bill was really this bill to try to put into language that the school shall not do that why is any school teaching your kids about from the age of five or six about sex or about any of this garbage? You know, that they are a bunch of pedophiles. If you did that, well, you'd go to jail, but you can do it as a teacher. And you can come dressed as some wacko, looks like a, a woman with giant breasts that are sticking out there five, three feet in front of you, and that's fine. You know, this world has gone insane, brothers and sisters. So we need to pray more now than ever. We need to get on our faces and pray to the Lord God and intercede um, for this planet. And we know that the Bible tells us that things are going to get worse and worse. It will be as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what the Bible tells us. Lot, in the days of Lot, what happened in the days of Lot? Those cities burned and they were a bunch of, of uh, homosexual. Just like uh, Peter said, you know, the Lord had told me, I was praying, Lord, what, what is the best, um, what is the best Bible verses to, to read the best, you know, one of the gospels or what, what, what is really the best, you know, and he began to deal with me and he told me in a dream, I had, I saw these three men and they were talking about what the best, um, scriptures were. And they were talking about Peter and then Peter, it talks about men uh, burning with lust one for another and all these things. It's just, brothers and sisters, this, uh, and we see what's going on in Israel too. You know, and you can't hardly say anything because these people are watching these videos and then they want to flag you for some anti-something, you know, when you're just speaking what the Word of God says. We know what God's Word says. It's a fact. It's a book. Are they going to ban the Bible? Yes, they will at some point, or they'll modify it so heavily that it's no longer recognizable to what we have. So, you know, the Lord had shown me the rapture's going to happen. Now, this has been 12 years since the Lord spoke to me, brothers and sisters. Charlotte, don't eat that stuff. Come on, baby. Charlotte, come on. Charlotte, come on. Get away from there. Come on, let's go. Let's go. So, this has been 12 years. I've been on this journey. You know, I've been a Christian and then and then backslid and then been a Christian. This is the longest time, really, brothers and sisters, that I've really stuck with this. I mean, like, you know, most people, you start getting, what happens? I mean, in my experience, you know, people begin to not pray as much and they begin to watch TV and they begin to do these things and then, Pretty soon you get further and further from the Lord and his voice gets fainter and fainter. You know, like you're out there in a boat away from the shore. You know, I've done this before. I used to have a 29 and a half foot um, ocean boat and I had it down at San Pedro. This was years ago when I had some money. <laughs> and um, that boat, I could drive that boat out towards Catalina Island and pretty soon you couldn't see the shoreline, you know. And you could hear, when you're out in the, the little bay there, you could hear bells ringing, and you could hear, you know, people talking, and there was a a big, at that time they had uh, like a big coal dump there, and they were using that to, for manufacture of like uh, petroleum products. 
and so you could hear that machinery running and you could hear people talking but as you got further away from the shore brothers and sisters you, you the voice began to get fainter and fainter and so that's what happens to us in our christian walk if we're not careful and we don't protect that you know we got to you got to protect your walk with the lord like it's the most valuable thing you have because it is this is all that we have is God's word and we can trust on him. And you know what? Jesus will forgive you if you've fallen away. Jesus will forgive you if you've got further away from him and you no longer feel anything. So brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you to um, seek the Lord, to go get in a private place and don't don't like try to multitask because the whole world wants to tell you, you got to multitask. You got to do three or four things. You know, you got to be on your computer watching a little bit of TV or on your phone and watching some TV and maybe have a Bible scripture in front of you and glance at it. You got to give God the full time that he deserves, brothers and sisters. This is the end of this whole thing. We are working towards the end. The Lord told me that when they come to take your home, you shall know that it is the end of time. There is no more time left. Well, the Lord... Uh, that happened to me. I had a $400 house payment. All my bills were paid for. And all of a sudden, you know, I had some surgery on my knee. And next thing I know, uh, other people were in my finances and then I end up losing my home. So that's, that's what can happen to you. And the Lord had told me before it happened that it was going to happen. Then it happened. So brothers and sisters, we can believe in the Lord. We can believe what he has to say to us. We can trust in him no matter what your eyes tell you, what you see with your eyes and what, what's going on around you. Just like um, when Elijah was going <clears> to <throat> ascend and he was talking to um, Elisha and, and he told him, he said, look, if you, he says, look, I want, I want your power. That's all I want. I want to have the same anointing you had. And so he said, okay, if you see me when I go, brothers and sisters, he said, if you see me. And so he followed him around everywhere. And uh, then the time for him to ascend came and there was this, this storm that came and this wind was blowing and there was all this lightning and thunder and all this noise and frightening, frightening noise, like a tornado with lightning in it. And then all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, a chariot of fire came down and it came between him and the prophet between Elijah and Elisha, and it knocked them apart, and he still kept his eyes on him. And you know what? Pretty soon down came that cape of his, and he had his anointing. So, brothers and sisters, I advise you to keep your eye on the Lord, no matter what happens, no matter what kind of storm is coming against you or coming against your heart or against your world, because Jesus Christ is there, and he sees you. And if you just keep your eyes focused on him, brothers and sisters, if you just look towards the Christ, towards Jesus. Look at him. Look in his eyes. Just focus your vision on the Lord's eyes and keep steady upon him and he will never let you down. It doesn't matter what it is. And just like the three Hebrew children said, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were commanded to bow down to, to this idol and to the king and don't, and don't pray anymore and all these things, and they did it anyway. They wouldn't bow down to him. So then they were thrown into that fiery pit. And they said before they went in, they said, look, our God can save us. We know this, our God can save us. This is faith, brothers and sisters. You know, I haven't always demonstrated that kind of faith. You know, God tests you and he tries you and he goes, look, I want to see what you're made of. Just like he did with um, Jake, uh, Job. When Job was there, you know, Job had it all perfect and he had a perfect family and he had all these things and he was rich. But as soon as all that was taken from him, the test began. And, and we know in the word it says not to be shocked is really what the word is. Dismayed when the fiery trial comes upon you as if something strange was happened to you, brothers and sisters. That's what we got to have. We got to have that kind of faith because you know what those men, when they grabbed those men, they said, look, we know our God can deliver us. But know this, King, even if he doesn't, we won't fall down and worship you. And so they heated that fire furnace seven times hotter. It was so hot that the men that opened the door died. It killed them just from being near that when they opened the doors. And then they threw them in there. And what did they see? Behold, they saw 
One that looked like the Son of Man walking around in there, and there the fire was so hot it burned it burned their uh, their the, the bindings that were on them off. Their clothes didn't burn. It didn't even smell like smoke. Our God is a powerful God. Think about that. When you're in the fiery trial and things are happening to you, you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, and there's a little bit of evidence outside of the Bible that talks about them and about that fiery furnace over there. So we know that happened. We know these things occurred in history, brothers and sisters, so you can depend on God. That's what I'm telling you. That no matter what happens, if ISIS has you and like he did those like they did those twenty seven Christians and they had them there at the shoreline and they cut they decapitated those men one by one. But Jesus Christ was right there with them. Brothers and sisters, it don't matter what happens to you in this world. And that's the hardest thing to get because the devil separates us and he wants to divide us and he wants to keep us all one by one in our little cubicles and don't you communicate with anybody else and don't you walk in the spirit because I kala la bo sai yila la bo shanda bo hukiyas kina la bo si kia shanda bo hukaya yila la bo shanda hasi kia shanda bo hukai brothers and sisters the Lord God Almighty is in charge he's the one that's in charge and if you just bow your knees down to him and if you just walk in the spirit he'll protect you and keep you that is a guarantee and God never backs off from that. Never. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, my brothers and sisters, and I come before you. Father, if there are any that are in this audience watching this that aren't saved, we ask that the spirit of conviction would be upon them, that they would repent of their sins and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior, because it's by grace, through faith, that we're saved. So God Almighty, we ask if there are any also that need healing, that need healing for their minds or for their spirit or for their bodies, their physical bodies, God, that you would reach out with the power of those stripes that were laid down upon the back of our Lord and Savior and that you'd heal them, God. If there are any that need financial help, God, that they would be helped, God, that you'd provide a way for them, that you'd open their eyes so they could see it because help is there at all times. Your angels are there with us, watching over us, even as your prophet Elijah talked and he had his servant with him and the man was afraid and he said, and he prayed and he said, Lord, let his eyes be open. And he op and his eyes were open and he was able to see there was an entire legion of angels there camped around them. He just couldn't see it. We just can't see. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Lord God. Blessed be your name for your promises. Even these things, God, that is your faith, brothers and sisters, that if you just listen to the Lord, that you lean hard on him no matter what is happening to you in your life, that he will save you. Trust in him, even to the death. That's my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.